Hi, Danny. Thanks for coming on the show, mate. No worries, mate. How you doing? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Um, so I thought the best way to start this is to go straight to, the, I guess, the defining point of your career, and that's the 2017 World Championship. Yeah. Um, now, this, this is kind of this mad story because... From my perspective, it was like, oh, Danny Curl's racing, that's interesting. And then you end up winning it. But, like, how did that drive come about? Where did it come from? Yeah, so it's, um, it, it's, it's quite a strange story, um, how, how it all happened. Basically, we was, uh, that year we was racing uh, with, with Terry Fullerton in the, in the Fullerton chassis, or still with Jake Cart, but um, they was using the Fullerton chassis. Um, and the plan the whole year, obviously, we, we, we noticed at the beginning of the year it was going to be held at PFI, which is great for us. We know, know the circuit. Always wanted to do an event like that, but never been able to get the budget together to go and travel and all that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so the plan altogether was to race with, with Fullerton on the uh, IAMI engines uh, because, obviously, we're, we're very close with, with Mills and uh, they import the IAMI X30, so it's just led from there, basically, to the, for the engine. Um, and, yeah, we was, we, that was the whole plan. Um, and then we came to the Kart Masters and uh, was, was fast. We, that was on the X30 uh, with Jay Karts, and we was leading the final the whole way through. And um, there was a bit of an altercation behind and uh, something to do. Uh, ben Barnico was racing with Terry as well. And uh, I, I don't obviously I don't know what happened. I was in front, but um, basically there was a bit of a bit of a crash going on behind, and then uh, the person in second ended up hitting me, uh, which then pushed the the rear bumper, obviously plastic rear bumper, onto the tire, and then uh, obviously couldn't get it off just around the last section of the track, and then obviously I finished second behind behind Ben because of this, that situation, um, and then. Afterwards, there was some sort of, you know, like, well, maybe it was Ben, maybe it was that caused the crash or whatever. And, and, uh, and, and anyway, um, Scott, who basically runs the J-Cart team at the race circuits, he was, he was not very happy about the situation. And uh, he, he, you know, made it clear that he wasn't happy about the situation. So anyway, that, that kind of brought us to, to think maybe we should try and use a different chassis i think he was already planning on trying to use a different chassis for next year anyway for his own team um so yeah that that was basically how that came about and then we was obviously by this time we're close to the event we were thinking out what, what we're going to do where we're going to going to try and go so we ended up contacting uh, james mills who was obviously helping us out with the engine anyway um and he said look let me speak to dino chiesa because he's a good friend uh, see if he's got any possibility of how, how we can do it. And uh, yeah, that's how the drive came about. He said, yeah, you, you can come along. You, you, I'll, get, I'll supply the chassis and stuff and you just got to sort out the entries and, and, and all of this stuff, the tyres and things like that. So that was basically how it came along. And then, yeah, just from there, it was unbelievable. Obviously, they uh, did a very good job. And I, I always had my, my team behind me, Jay Cart, I had Ross and Scott both there on, on with me. So... We did a lot of, of obviously the, the pressures and everything to, to try and get the best out of it. And yeah, it was great. So like at what point in the weekend, because there must have been a point, the expectation of going into the World Championship, I guess it was high. But at what point in the weekend did you go, uh, I'm, I'm in with a shout here? Uh, not until we, we did the practice, the practice sessions and... Um, Obviously, in, in them sort of events, you get two two chassis to use. Um, so you can sign on two chassis. So uh, we look, in the practice, we look quite strong, but it's hard to tell because in, in that event, you have the junior, which is on a different tyre than the senior. And I think then it was, they was on Vegas and we was on Lacan. So, and every time a, a, a Lacan followed a Vega onto the track, like the session after a Vega had been, they would always go exceptionally fast. And because I was a, a late entry or whatever, I was I didn't do the European Championship. So that's they kind of select your sessions where you finished in the European Championship. So the top 
10 or 15 or in the first session and then back and forth. So I was in like the third or fourth senior sessions. So by that time, I'd be always following the comp tires onto the track and I'd always be fast in the session, but nowhere near as, as quick as the first group. And it was always kind of when, when you haven't really done that sort of event before, it was hard to, to get your mind out, out, out over how the track is at different times and, and all this situation. So we was looking okay, but every time Dino came in to the awning and, and said, yeah, it's fine, no problem. And I was thinking, how's it? No problem. We're about two, three tenths off here. What's how we, <laughs> we need to try and do something to, to, yeah, we're good in our session, but look at them. Like they're, they're the boys from the European. They're, they're the top ones you want to be aiming for and they're at least two two and a half three tenths quicker than me so what's the problem and he, he said no it's, it's no problem you're good and you walk off again you think well hang on <laughs> what's going on all right then so yeah that was that was how that happened then obviously qualifying came around and that was actually my fault i we had two different chassis basically very similar but just had you know one had a little bit more rear grip and the other one had a little bit more less rear just that sort of thing so, um, yeah, I, I chose a, a chassis for qualifying and uh, it, it turned out that we should have used the other one for qualifying because it's like after qualifying, I took straight on the other chassis and I qualified seventh, I think, overall, which was really good. We was ha really happy with that, thinking that that's great, that starting up the sharp end. Um, and then we swapped onto this other chassis for the heats because uh, Scott and Ross both said, oh, we should try try it for the heat, see, see how we get on. And yeah, went straight on that. And first heat was was ridiculously fast, came through to second, was all over, uh, I think it was Valton in the lead. Could have overtaken, but all, all the time I was thinking in my head, this, this is a really good finishing position now, second place, just relax. So I ended up finishing second, then the next heat won, then the next heat won again. And I was thinking, wow, we're looking uh, ridiculously strong here. And then out, by that time I was thinking, might actually be possible um and then yeah that, that was when it, it came into my head that it was actually possible to win the world championship and then i guess the final it looked like because I, I remember watching and uh, it looked you looked pretty solid all the way through i think the last lap was was kind of like i think you had to look behind and went wide at the yeah. first hairpin and i was like oh man no 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 and then you, you held on to it like what so Here's the thing, like, I, I have this thing about world champions in karting not really getting kind of the reverence they deserve in, in a way. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, you're the world champion, so you can correct me if, if I'm wrong. And obviously, I understand, like, you might not say I want to be adored or anything like that. But like, at the time, what did it what did it mean to you to win the world championship? Did you did you understand the significance of it, the history of it, that kind of thing? At the time, I remember after the race, I don't know, I don't, it might be different because obviously it was a, a track I knew, I knew most people there, it was just, I don't know, it, the, the pressure was immense and you, I felt that all the way through through the competition and especially in the final, but after the race, it was like, um, I didn't realise what how, how big the actual race was until we got back to, I got back home and then like I, my phone was going going off like through the roof. It was like Facebook messages, Instagram things going ping, 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 like, well done, congratulations, unbelievable. Like I then in the morning woke up and like 400 notifications or something like that, thinking, wow, <laughs> this race was actually a big deal. Yeah, I think I like, that was that's the thing. Um like it's hard like I like really the whole point of me doing these interviews and not really interviews and discussions is I want like people to know who you are. I don't see, cause the last few years, Britain has like, we've had Tom Joyner, I guess Lando Norris won it. Um, Callum won it last year and then you won it in 2017. And it's like, I remember when Ollie Oaks won it in 2000 and 2005, I think it was. And he was testing at Wilton like a week after. And it was like, here's a world champion testing at Wilton. And he could have just been anybody. Like, nobody noticed who he was. And, um, yeah, so I just thought that, yeah, the whole the whole point of this is, like, we, you won the 2017. You were the best in the world at our sport, you know. And I thought, that's pretty incredible. Like, so what was it like working with 
Chiesa. Like, I know, obviously, you've said you're in a different awning. Like, how much input did 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 he have? Like, because obviously, he's like a legendary name in the sport. Yeah, he's he's very um, it's 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 hard to hard to explain how he, he works. He's he's very um particular, but particular more on the on the chassis side. Like, I remember him. It obviously, through the practice, we we had a few chassis to try. I can't remember how many it was. I think four or five chassis he brought he, he brought with him, and uh, he was he always knew what chassis to use at a certain time. Not axle caster things like this. He'd always go chassis, and then like I remember coming in after a practice, thinking, and then I say to him, uh, Dean, I've got a little bit of little bit of rear slide through like the long long bank and over the top of the bridge and you go okay change the frame and then ross obviously was mechanic in me and he'd be like what change the frame can't we just try an axle or <laughs> so can you change some hubs or something no it's frame so ross would have to strip the whole frame put another frame down try it yeah actually oh, got more rid of this but now i'm struggling for front yeah okay another frame and you think wow this is another different ball game but yeah he's, he's very 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 clever on on the chassis side of things I mean, uh, also he's got another he, another person who works with him as well. It's uh, Flavio, and he's kind of he's in the background, but he's he he knows he's very clever as well. He knows a lot about axles and all this sort of things for for like the tiny if you if you need a tiny bit of gain, like a tenth or half a tenth here, or he's he's your man for 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 things like that. But um, yeah, and to be honest, it was with with Dino, we didn't really see him a lot. After after we'd, we'd tested the chassis, it was like he was hardly ever there. He was always somewhere else, just doing doing something. But yeah, it was that that was kind of where he was. And then uh, um, me, Ross, and Scott was always tinkering away with different pressures and stuff. And uh, that was where that was where we came. So like, I guess it's it's worthwhile like touching upon your relationship with Jade Carts, you know, Ross Scott and, and Mark and that. Like in that in itself is quite cool that you've gone from like junior TKM to the world championship. And I don't know if there's many stories like that anymore. I can't think of that kind of loyalty to, to people that has actually manifested itself in the end in like a world championship. Like that in itself is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very, very cool to be to be to do it with them as well at at, at you at, with you as well. It's uh, it's, it's amazing, and that they they always wanted they always wanted me to do some sort of event like that, but it was never possible for for me to to my family or anything to find the budget to do it. And obviously for them, it was they they was always helped me out in in the UK, but for them also it was never really a. a something that they could could push me forward to to try and do but um well, as soon as we found out it was coming to be a fire they was they were straight on it they, they wanted to do it they was organizing it for me they was doing everything they could to try and get me there and and yeah they've i've always as like you say i've been with them my whole kind career i've never in, i've never wanted to to move like they're, they're such great people and and uh yeah i remember them the first time mark actually approached me was was at shannington obviously and uh I was using my my elder brother's TKM Intrepid car, obviously just to 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 have a go. And we had a we had an old camper there, and uh, we had to get the cushions like one cushion on the bottom of the seat and one cushion at the back to try and lift me up and forward so that I could reach the the steering wheel. And that that after that, I mean, I think he saw it and thought that was quite funny and came up to to us and had a had a chat and it just evolved from there. See that's that's interesting because um I have a lot of um what's the word I have a lot of arguments with people because I'm an argumentative person right and uh, they'll go to me they'll be always like oh this carting's elite oh it's it's all billionaires now and F1 and all that and, and I always like to remind them like like you you came from Shennington right to world yeah. champion I think Tom Joyner, when he won the world championship, was still technically a postman. <laughs> like, yeah. so for me, like, I'm going, isn't this like amazing? You can be the world champion in our sport. Like, there's not many FIA accredited world championships. Like, they don't just give them out. It's historically goes back to like the six nineteen sixty, I think. 
we've got that lineage of drivers and you can go from nothing relatively speaking to the to the top of the sport and and for me that's the kind of cool story like right? those early days what were those early days like for you like when you started racing yeah it was, it was difficult you know obviously my my family's not really been able to afford uh to to do it properly and and my we always had help from from my older brother who's obviously racing before me uh from from a guy in uh who was just very had a lot of passion for the sport but had a, had a wood flooring business and he just came along and helped help my brother out to, to, to race himself and then obviously I was old enough to come along and have a go and um my older brother was by that time he'd, he'd won the British Championship in TKM which was there was some big names going on in that in that time um and yeah and then it was kind of I was I was starting and for the beginning point it was okay for me to to kind of practice as well as him when he was racing and stuff, um, using all of his old old equipment. But at the time where I was wanting to try and race, he he kind of had to take a back step because obviously we couldn't afford two people to to drive at the same time. So he kind of stepped down and and did more of the helping out. And then I I had to go and started to enjoy it. And then that's and then obviously Mark came along and, and said do you want to try and you know have a go on, on a, one of our chassis it'll be good so and then yeah we said yeah it's fine yeah, we'll have a go but obviously we can't can't afford it really and he said yeah just come and have a go so and then that was that was that it worked out but it was yeah it's very difficult to to try and get going obviously when when you haven't got a lot of um money to start it's kind of hard to to keep going so but i was i was very uh, grateful that Mark came along and and then that was how I get managed to stay stay racing for so long. I think that's kind of like when I obviously I went and I, I spoke to Mark for the the video I did on the Morecambe World Cup and I, which is I still can't believe they did that event and I think it's like for what what Jade Carts do at Shennington and stuff like I guess to a certain degree it's underestimated but they do facilitate so much like they've literally helped you go from you know someone that was just testing and racing to, to a world champion and that's that in itself I just find an incredible story and um, yeah I'd, I'd, I'd love what those guys do they just seem like a real nice tight unit a real karting family you know and obviously oh, they, yeah. they do the division one stuff which is bonkers you know they build their own carts and I'll have to I'll have to go back and, and do something again with them um, I wanted to pivot a little bit because um, there's another thing I wanted to talk about. Um, so most people that race in, in, in England and that we're used to Shennington, Kimbolton, PF, if we're, you know, fancy having a nice easy weekend, but obviously you've raced around the world. Um, and I have a particular fondness for the super Nats just because yeah. it's weird. Like it's yeah. honestly, the, I went there in 2009 when Schumacher raced and, and I went and reported on it. What was your like? How did what was the experience like for you when when you went to to that event? Yeah, it's 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 a mad it's it's a crazy event. Like it's so fun, but so crazy at the same time. Things people things that you see is just like unbelievable. And like you get to the track, and and obviously no one sees the track until the I think the Wednesday, and then you start practicing on the Thursday or whatever. So they open the track, and you go for a walk around it, and you think. Surely not. Well, it's just a ba- like a barrier into another barrier, and then they randomly put a curb in a, in the, for the one random corner, and then back to a barrier again. You think, well, what's going? On? It's crazy. And then yeah, you head out on the track, and you're like dodging people, or just smashing barriers everywhere on the first session because they don't. Not like, obviously, they're just going too hard for for a, a corner and, and hit straight into the barrier, and that's then parked. So then you dodging people all over the place and having a few scuffs on the barrier yourself and trying to trying to reach the limit but yeah it's, it's a crazy event now but it's it's really enjoyable i'll definitely uh have a go again yeah because i what freaked me out i guess i wasn't racing like i was just there you know reporting on stuff but it was the weirdest thing was me was being in like it's like because it's las vegas you're so used to it it's like a movie set you, you remember it and yeah. then you walk outside and you're like now it's a kart race. 
And I can, yeah. I was really struggling. Like, I was like, if I was racing this, I don't know if I would cope mentally because I was, it was the weird in, incongruence, I guess. It's, it's very strange. But, and obviously, yeah. Tom Kutcher, he drives a lot, you know, he drives the whole event forward. Um, and I'd love, to, I'd love to try and get something like that in England. And I guess we've had that kind of stuff in the past, but it's very difficult. <laughs> like, America yeah. have, they have a different uh, outlook where stuff like that is kind of normal. Like racing in car yeah. parks and stuff is normal, but here it isn't so much. Yeah, they do. They do quite a lot of events like that in in America. It's obviously, the Vegas one's big because it's Vegas, and like everyone. That's why everyone knows it. But they do a lot of other stuff um, in car parks around Florida and things like that. But yeah, over here, I think we're a bit too. Um, I don't think yeah, way of it. Everyone will be, the old people that run it will be a bit scared about everything but uh <laughs> see i wouldn't i'm like i want to do that <laughs> yeah, exactly. i'd love to i'd love to have it something like that it would be, be a good good laugh over here but people the trouble is over here as well people will try and like make it a sort of money exercise as well at the same time and it'll, it'll just kind of kill it off before it gets started you know over there they they, they seem to um make it like more fun which is which is what you want, you know. You want a bit of fun in, in karting as well. As, it's got to be professional, but obviously a bit of fun as well can go, mm. doesn't go miss. People love I, that. I remember when I interviewed Tom for it, like he was genuine. It was boy. He was genuinely emotional that people were coming to his event from Italy and the top drivers. Like it, you could see yeah, that yeah. it really meant some. And he's you know he's he's typical sort of brash American and all that. But like for me. It was like, it was kind of, I guess we're a bit more reserved over here. <laughs> you know, if you ever talk to yeah. people in karting in England, it's like, yeah, yeah. But over, he's just so bright, you know, it's like, man, that would be mint to have that here, you know. Yeah, it would, it would be fun. Definitely would be fun. Well, I'll, I'll try my best. I'll try and get something organised like that. <laughs> um, so like, because you actually did win it, didn't you? Won Super Nats a few years ago, and I think you come second... 2009 i forget because of all this stuff that's been going on i don't know what year it is um i was, I was uh I, I qualified pole there in, in one year but then i had a, a big crash from um someone just because before the drop down noses some people just used to ram you straight into a wall um so that was that was how my year finished one year and then yeah last year not last year year before uh I finished second i went for the i was i went for the lead on the last lap last corner just that, you, that sort of event you have to go for it. Yeah, it looked like, well, I don't know, it looked like you were down on power to me, but that just might have been me. Like, it just looked like yeah. it was, wasn't was quite there. No, uh, we struggled We struggled a lot through the whole event uh, to try and get it to go, but we we couldn't really work out how to, you know, get it going. We get, got it better and better, and I think, to be honest, in the end, it was the best it was, it was going to go, was, was then. Like, we, we tried the whole week to try and get it to go better, but just could not get it to, to go as well as what a lot of a lot of the other guys had but um yeah it's, sometimes it goes like that and you have to try and work work harder and harder to try and get it to go and, and in the end it was definitely the best the best it was going to be was it's in that final one we in the end it was kind of enough to try and win which is what we wanted but not enough to to um relay how how good everything else was working a lot of chassis and everything was was really good so um it was a shame but yeah um so obviously you've competed you've won the world championship you've won it's kind of confusing now because like we've we the the msa or motorsport uk now call everything the british championship and i get confused because i was so i was like proper purist on calling stuff what it's really called you know i'm one of those yeah. Um, people that will go on and someone says, oh, I'm racing at the World Championship. And I'm like, no, it's the Grand Finals. I'm like, one of those annoying <laughs> idiots. But to me, like, if you win the World Championship, that's yours. You're the only World Champion. But, like, when I was talking to Jack, I don't know if you saw uh, the, the conversation with Jack, and it's, like, the X30 grid in the UK, and, and I guess karting in general, like, seems to be, like, really, really competitive. And you're you're the number one guy at the moment. Like... How do you view British karting, sort of in terms of competition? Because I look at the X30 grid and I think I don't know if there's a better national grid of anything anywhere. Yeah, well, it's always it's always for me it's always easy to see like when 
whenever there's a European event for X30 or anything like that happens, nearly all the top 10 is English. Like that you'd get a couple of Spanish maybe or a couple of Italian in there. But most of the time, it's always the English who one, two, three, four, always English. Uh, I think like in, in Portugal in the I games last year, I think the top 10, there was eight or six English in the top 10. And it, it was for the first three were English. And you look at that and you just think, what, well, you know, all them drivers race in England. So, I mean, in my view, I think, what's, what's the point in going, travelling all the way there to race and when I can just go two and a half hours and race them here? It's no, it's no different. So uh, that's that's where I sort of look, looked at things like that. Obviously, the OK bit's different because it's, it's a lot more, um, we don't have OK in England. So we don't have a, a, a grid for it. So it's um, all of our teams don't push for for that sort of thing. But um, yeah, the X30 bit is definitely the hardest is is English. Why do you think? Um, why? What do you think? I guess not really. Why? Um, in terms of senior, okay, and we don't have it here anymore. I I, I just think that single mate racing is so sort of embedded in the culture now it's really difficult to get people to even understand why they'd race senior okay um especially because if you've got different manufacturers and stuff i think it just scares people off um what's your view on okay because they're 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 not slow they're quick everybody that drives them tends to enjoy them um but we all we're all racing you know rotax or x30 yeah i mean I, lo- I love you, okay. I, think I, f- I love driving it. I think it's awesome. Um, obviously, it's difficult for me. In Europe, they, they've got the weight limit so low, it's, it's hard for me to try and, to try and make that. Um, whenever I, I, I try and lose the weight to, to make the, uh, the races, I just always feel, feel terrible. So you have to be around 65 to 66 kilos max, which is unbelievable if you were, it's, it's, you know, to take me out. Now I'm 23 years old. You want me to make 66 kilos? I was that when I was 15. <laughs> how how am I supposed to make that? So um, yeah, over over there is that's for me the where they go wrong over there. But it is what it is. And uh, over here, yeah, I, I think a lot of people get scared for from a cost point of view. Um, if it was how they have it in in Europe, then. It obviously would be quite expensive because they, they bring out new new equipment all the time they're changing everything all the time and if if people did that over here then it would get too much way too much for for your normal for your normal people um but yeah i i, I, I don't know I, I really like it it's a shame it's not not here but it is what it is i've, I've always felt like i wanted like some sort of i don't know not like elite, but some sort of class over here that was sort of you had to have had a like win a something big to to do it, like so that people so it made it more premier or something, just something like that. Like, and that would be enough for okay, you know, if it, if you won something like that in X30, then like the British Championship or you won the Kart Masters or you won the O play some sort of big national event, then you know, you could move into this okay class, which is a lot faster, a lot We used lot to more. we used to have it like that. Um I guess we had a hundred Britain and then like hundred Britain Club or and then it's hundred national and then a hundred supers or hundred international. Like we did have that here. I guess I guess like because we have single mate racing, like single mate racing and I hate the term with a passion but they have this thing called like they go democratization and they're just trying to make that everybody races in the same kind of thing and i think like if you're running those classes they're petrified of like like creating like actual hierarchies for drivers they just want you buy the engine and you go racing and and what you kind of need to have that elite like i'd love that that's what i'd like if you do motocross, you turn up and you get put in the C group if you're new, or the rookie yeah. group, and then it's like you get better. Then you're like, so with kart racing, we don't have that anymore. And um, but what you'd need is you'd need a governing body 
who would they'd have to probably sack off single make because to have an elite category you'd probably need multiple manufacturers because you'd have to select a single manufacturer otherwise so the, the governing body like most what you can would just have to come in and go smash everything to pieces and go nope this is it you know we're going to change the way the sport works and i'd love that because like for someone like me who, who tries to get involved in karting in a different way like because I can't race that much, as much as I want to. Like, I did the British Championship in 2011, right? And I entered it in KF. I'm fucking, like, out of my depth, totally. But the whole point of it was to go, this is the British Championship. This is supposed to be what we all want to be, you know? Um, but it's, it's just, an, it's, 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 you have to teach people that it's worth being the best. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's worth, it's worthwhile to be the best in the country, the guy that everybody wants to beat. And if you want to beat him, you have to be the best. Um, and I could rattle on forever about it. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I just think, I just think we've got, we've got, like, you got you, so I talk, I th I'm saying we've got Danny Curl, you're right here in front of me. To me, that's like front of the magazine. You should be being interviewed by everybody. We should be doing videos with you at the circuit and going, what's this guy about? Who, who wants to beat him? Who's the new upcoming guy that wants to dethrone the king? That kind of stuff, you know? No, I'd love that, you know? Um, maybe we'll get there. Uh, it would be nice. Yeah. It would be nice. I mean, uh, like, it, it's it's also for, for like, say, we have, we have customers in uh, with us in, in J-Carts, and, it, and it's, it's hard when they come along to begin with and, and they start off club level, yeah, fine, and then they want to try and do the British Championship, but they, they jump straight in and they... It, they, it takes it's hard for them to understand that you need to it takes years to become to to get to a level where you're constantly at the front and, and winning races at all these different circuits it takes years it's not it's not a you're going to do it for one year and bang you're at the front it's not like that sort of thing and if you had different like and then it scares them off and then they get in the end they get annoyed and go and stop because yeah. well the half the problem is danny is like you go to a club race at pf <laughs> And you're racing yeah. at like world championship yeah. level and you're like, all I want is like novices turning up, you know, like we all did looking like idiots going, you know, getting, learning your, learning your way. And they're getting thrown in at a world championship. It's like going, going like starting football and like, oh yeah, you're playing Barcelona this weekend. Sorry. What? You know, it's that yeah. kind of thing, which is in some ways it's kind of cool. In others, I just like it if, you know, we had that kind of. Like, I watch Supercross, and I always talk about it, and I could rattle off the top five in Supercross in seconds. And I know everybody, I know what they're about. I know Barsha's a bit of a nut job. Roxon is rock solid. You know, Tomac's having a bit of a... Like, I know all the names, and I'd love it if it was the same in karting, but um, yeah. I keep going on. I repeat that, I repeat it. I'm just hoping people get it. <laughs> and one day we're all like, you know. Um, on, on a side thing, like, I thought would be quite cool to talk about is, like... So you're mainly doing kind of X30 at the moment and you do a bit of um, OK as well. Like, what's, how, what do you feel about driving other carts that you've driven? Because I know you've done a, you've tested the 250 National. Um, you've done some old school stuff. What did you make of, of doing all of that kind of stuff? Because karting is kind of weird in that the fastest class isn't the pinnacle. It's, you know, it's this weird way we do things. But what did you make of, like, for example, the 250 at, like taking that round Shennington. Yeah, the, the, the you know when I when I first time I jumped in the two fifty, I thought it, they're nut jobs to be honest. Good like that. so fast, you you'd be on the throttle and all of a sudden like the power would come in and you'd be like your head would come off. You'd be changing gears like look, look, looking up at the sky because your neck's coming up. Like, and uh, yeah, it was um, it was crazy. I I did a race at, in the in the Midland Championship at Risington. In the two fifty, I did. I didn't know that. Yeah, I did. I did the race, and uh, it, it wasn't like a, it wasn't a big grid, so I, I won the race. But um, like I remember one, having a having a tank slap. You know, Risington, when you go around the back, you go through, go down a long back straight, then you go right, right onto the start finish straight. The last right out of there, I think it's like you don't even change down. I think you're staying in fifth the whole way through the corner, nearly flat. And I ended up getting the back wheel onto like the curb a little bit on the exit. And I had a little tank zap all the way. And I was, I was so like close that if it, if it spun round, I was going to hit the Marshall post. So I was thinking, 
like that, like, but it's so it's so cool, you know, that you get that much speed out of uh, while you're sat this far off the floor and you think like it's unbelievable. Um, I, 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 that it, it's kind of it's really difficult to because like, the onboards of 250s don't really do them justice because they are no. they are quite heavy, so like yeah. you they are light relative to a car but they're still weighty so when when they do go it ain't like you're like oh dinky dink this is all right it's like oh yeah 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 when when they go that's to me that's the only like i, I love racing um the x30 and stuff just because they're 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 heavy but in re- when you drive something like that the the x30 is really light you know so you, you, like the way that you can come into the corner and feel the chassis moving around with, with you, like the wheel coming up and all this sort of thing is, is that's what I love when I'm driving. But when you're driving a 250, you don't really get that sort of that feel. You, you get you get so much power and and obviously you've got the, the brakes on the front and, and everything. You're trying to stop stop the thing as good as possible with while you're traveling so fast. But it's just it all happens so quick. It's so so enjoyable in that sort of way. And then, yeah, and then, like, uh, also that's why I've uh, I really love the old school stuff when I drive out as well. Like J Cut's got quite a few a few old school cars, and then just like the way they sound, and then they're even lighter again. And that normally they they had better tires as well and everything. It was just the way that the thing handled and and sounded it, like when you put your foot on out the corner and it, the way you have to keep everything under control, like the engine and the all the temperatures and everything like i love i love that sort of sort of technical side as well because i think i i'm i'm an old school person like you can probably tell because i've got got the engines behind me um like with the old stuff there's a kind of like um because modern's modern even though we're still racing two strokes like you're not with an x30 and, and obviously less so right you're not really managing the engine so much nowadays like you're not really on the carb and you're not like, it's not so much as and I always say to people, like, the old stuff actually, because people go, oh, the modern stuff, it's all fair and it's about the driver. And I like to remind people, like, now I used to watch, I watched Mike Spencer when he when he was racing the hundreds when he came back. And I was watching him really careful with him and it was um, John John uh, John Wellstead. And, like, you could see that the level of knowledge he had with the engines and how to get them running perfect is a skill in itself. And, like... It helps the best drivers elevate themselves because mm. there's an extra element of like, should I dial it back? Should I push it a bit more? It's the risk taken, you know. And I always yeah, thought, yeah. like from a visual perspective, like we we have this assumption that what we have now is better for drivers, and I'm like, it's not necessarily because those those uh, old cars. If you're the nuts. Like you're even much better if that makes sense, you know. So it's that that, but it's difficult because I'm all, I always get accused like get accused of being stuck in the past, and um, that's fair enough. Like I don't mind. So. <laughs> <laughs> so for you, like for you, where you are in the sport now, like how is how is everything for you with with everything that's going on? Are you you still able to do what you want to do this year? Um, for me, it's it's more obviously you get to a certain age and you think that. You need to. I went through a lot of time, like um, working a lot during the winter to, to get them, like enough money together to try and to to so I can race in the summer and and stuff like that. But you get to a point where you think oh, I've had enough coming to zero and then trying to try and earn all your money back. And so you have to try and figure out what's best for you. And obviously, I still I still love driving. Um, so. I've, I've wanted to, to try and stay driving and the way of kind of doing that at the moment is by doing a lot of coaching work so that I'm still, still driving on track, obviously, um, not, a, not, not much to do with like testing and stuff, just coaching drivers, um, to keep in the seat and then doing odd races here and there where I can, but that in that sort of way I can, because if you take a, a big break from driving, like I did it after I won the world championship, I did. I took like a six month break from driving to to work at Williams during the during the winter to try and earn some some money together so that then the following year I could try and do more European stuff with Chiesa and stuff and all that. But you you do the six month break and then you jump back in a car and you think, well, 
that I shouldn't like. I'm nowhere near where I was when I when I left. Like I, sh- I should have stayed driving all the way through the winter to keep, and that's that's where I went wrong that year. But yeah, now now I'm, I'm more on on the the fact of trying to earn some some money and and still race at the same time, but only do like certain races, not just a lot. Rather do less, but but more of a more sort of privileged rate races. So like that's interesting. So like you obviously like it's for, like for me like I'm looking at it and going what's because you've got a well there's two things I want to ask you about. Like I want to say does Williams know how good you are at driving <laughs> for starters? <laughs> do they know they've got a world champion working for them? And two um, like. What what could be done, I guess? What do you feel? And you can say what you want. What? Because in, in the UK, we don't have any media anymore, like, really. Like, I don't consider myself media, like Carting Magazine or whatever. Um, and obviously, Carting Magazine doesn't exist. And there's a, I think there's another magazine coming in. But, like, for you, is there... How could we help a guy like yourself create opportunity where... Like you're the world champion, and then you're going, yeah, and then I had to work for six months. And I don't know any other sport where the world champion goes, uh, well, I, you know, I had to kind of work for six to get the money. Like, is there anything where you think, oh, is there? Could there? Is there opportunities there for you that aren't available because of the lack of media coverage? I don't know if I'm biasing the question too much. Um, yeah, I think obviously the nowadays media is where, is where you get obviously like you, you get more people to notice what you're doing and I don't know I guess um it would have been nice to to have that uh after the after when I won the world championship it'd be nice to there was there was obviously the normal stuff but it doesn't really I don't know I think Karin doesn't really get the the sort of notice that it should in in a way and it should get more of a more of or more of a notice from like car teams and and all that, but again, that motorsport for me has become more of a more of a money exercise than than anything else, and it's it's a shame because drivers miss out on opportunities just because of that, and it, it shouldn't be like that. But it, it is sort of how it's how it's gone, and maybe it'll come back, but it, it doesn't really help for people like like me and the, like other drivers that have gone through mm. like winning winning big races but not really getting anywhere from it. Yeah, because I, I thought it'd be cool for me. Like my perfect scenario is like being a world championship carter should sustain your career as a kart driver. You should be in demand. There should be interest because we look. You know the game, Danny. I know the game. There's unquestionably in my mind that top level karting is probably the highest level of motorsport. I don't know if you agree in terms of four wheels, right? Bikes is a different realm, but in four wheeled motorsport. Kart racing is as good as it gets in terms of driver talent, yet it's 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 actively kind of it doesn't it doesn't seem to screen that too much, you know, even from the FIA side and that kind of stuff. Do you do you feel that your side, or is that just me projecting? No, yeah, I, I do I do feel that, but I feel like it's more not of a it's more of a um, it's more of a competition. Like, in in England racing the X30 than the FIA in in an okay because uh, when you go over there people are spending like 18 19,000 for a race and you think how like and and, you, and then you think well, what are they doing for that like this this it's more of over there the, the more money you have the more money you spend the more, more things you try the more things you get but over here like you say the X30 thing is it's more of a an equal thing it shows it, sh- it shows the driver more obviously not in a way of like we used to with like you say with like how you used to look after the engines and stuff and 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 that would be put an, a driver in front of everyone else like you say but now you, if you're a good driver and you, you're in, in england racing x30 you you'll be at the front most of the time but if you're in okay and you're a good driver but you don't quite get the equipment that you should and there's other people that have then you'll be mid-pack and struggling 
and thinking what's going on. You can't and you can't do anything to change it because you need you need the person that's got the equipment to give it to you. And you can't do that with but if you just go and buy an engine from Mills in the next 30 and you're a good driver, you'll be able to get that thing to the front by with by yourself. And them drivers uh in that like we've got over here are the best they, they are the best in the world. Like Hodgson, Bradshaw, they all race over here and they are the best in the world. So it's you can race them easily over here, but when you go over there, you you can't because if you haven't got the equipment then mm. you're not gonna get there. Yeah, the the um I think part of the issue I guess and I could be wrong is I was net that when we went to KF from the hundreds, like there was only like hundreds were the end of their development cycle, really, and there wasn't a huge amount. Because I, I, I remember speaking to a works driver, and he said to me, with the old hundreds, if you found half a tenth in a barrel, it was like it was amazing, you know. And then like um, when KF came in, and then obviously OKs and even there seems to be this more breadth of development, um, like even like. It, like I don't know, maybe I'm just stuck in the past, but I think the the complexity of the engines, like with a power valve and stuff, it just adds an, an extra element of like you can you can spend the money if you really want it. Um, so I guess I guess finally, have you ever been tempted by KZ or doing anything like that? Because obviously I think um, it's Scott he races KZ, or he's he's doing a bit more Division One. Have you ever been tempted by that kind of thing or? Is yeah, the, yeah. Is, has there been opportunities for you, like internationally? Or... Yeah, yeah, there is. Um, there is opportunities, but it's like uh, just trying to go the best way for 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 what you, you want to do. If if it's going to open doors or not, but yeah, I, I really do uh, run a race it, and I might, I might do a bit this year of KZ, uh, depending on how, what the situation is. If I can, if I can, uh, can do it, and obviously the Division One, I, I really want to have a go at that, but really. Have a go. Scott's actually currently building his at the moment. Ross has obviously got his built. Um, but I don't know if you've seen that their one, they've got the two two twin KZ. One. Yeah, twin KZ. Um Scott's building one the same. So they're both gonna have a go uh, this year. But I'm sure I'll be able to tempt Scott into letting me have a little go well, at some point. Because obviously Jack Jack wants to do it, uh Jack Dex. He can have you, Scott Ross. <laughs> Jack, I mean, suddenly it looks like quite a different, pretty, you know, and there's some great drivers in it. I know Liam Morley and, and um, Lee Harpen and that. So, it, yeah, I mean that those twin carts. I saw the video of him going round um, Fullbeck. Yeah. With it, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, they go up there sometimes, just getting running in and stuff. He said he got over 100 mile an hour, and, and for those who don't know what Fullbeck is, over 100 mile an hour Fullbeck is pretty mad like the thing is though yeah. the thing is Danny like they race those on the Isle of Man like that I just can't I'm like that's off the scale I don't know what planet they're yeah. on doing when that. Mark used to race it back back in the day they they like that that world championship they did at, at um when you went and and videoed the, um, yeah. Okay, yeah like imagine it if if you go off there yeah <laughs> you're not gonna be seen again though like, <laughs> That, it, it's crazy the way they used to race, but that used to be normal to them. They, they have no, no issue in that at all, and I, I think that's amazing. I, I'd you, love to have it. I think like with that, I was, um, I remember speaking to Mark about it, and Mark was like, "Yeah, now you put it like that, it was a bit mad, wasn't it?" And I'm like, "You don't like because you have the spectators as well, and um, like that's kind of why partly over here I've wanted to kind of have an event where you could." theoretically have spectators i know red bull have tried their cart fight things but you know they're arriving drive like i'd love to have something where you could put carts in front of people with the best drivers even if it's a one-off but like back then i, I just love the idea because when i was there like there was people that remembered the event like i would chat to people like yeah 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 they should be a kart racing i used to love coming to watch you know yeah. and um even even at Raura, like I, I remember staying at a B and B, and like the the person that ran it was like, "Oh, we used to go there to watch in the '60s," you know. And I'm like, "Oh, it's, you know that they could could be quite cool if we had that now, but um, it's incredibly difficult." But to me, if you took a good grid of X30 drivers, stuck them on old carts because you know me, and then shoved them in in like a town centre, that's gonna be the nuts. Do you know what I mean? Like people are gonna watch that. 
Um, so yeah, I just, I, well, I could, uh, I think, you know, I, I could end it here. Um, obviously I could chat for ages and I just want to say thanks for coming on Danny. Like, um, you know, I hope this year's another good year for you. Um, have you got any plans for any international racing this year? Is there any, is that in, on the um, card at all? Yeah, potentially. I mean, it all just falls, it, it all just falls into if I can justify like the, because obviously I want to earn as, as much money as possible and and obviously race at the same time. If if I raced if I raced every race I wanted to, well, no, I'd earn no money every year. So, and obviously you got to live at some point. So, um, yeah, I'll I'll try and do um, odd races here and there. I mean, it might be a might I I really want to do the world championship again. Um, I'm not sure ever in OK or KZ because. OK is obviously a bit more difficult for me to make the weight and all this. But um, KZ is also difficult as well. We've, we've, I haven't done enough in it at all. So maybe me and Scott will, will try and get together and, and see if I can go out on his, his KZ um, here and there, over here, and then maybe maybe have a go at the World Championship. But we'll see. If you not, do, not Danny, enough. if you do, get a camera on it, mate. I want to see behind the scenes. Get yourself an eBay banger. Get yourself yeah. an old banger, mate. Yeah, go, old I'm going to start here. I'm going to test on this old banger, wear it out, and then I'm going to go and do the worlds. Like, yeah, because yeah. I think if, if um, like, from my perspective, it'd be nice to see kind of the, the what's going on with the drivers, you know, because it's so closed off now. We don't, like, you know, like, to me, it'd be epic. So, yeah, there's a recommendation for me. Get a camera or something. Just let's see what it, let's see how it goes. I think that'd be cool. But, yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully you can come on again sometime. And thanks for coming on, Danny. And, um yeah, no worries. Yeah, thanks for it. Thanks for it. Thanks for it, mate. mate. Yeah, no problem. Right. Cheers for having me.